Once upon a time, there was a place called the wilderness, and it waited and waited to befriend whoever arrived. There's always this cool thing with this show where it's like, is it or isn't it? You know what I mean? When it comes to the supernatural stuff, it's like, is this actually some weird supernatural thing that's going on? Or is this just a result of our psyches slipping into a bit of, you know, weird hallucinatory dementia because of the circumstances that we're living through? We weren't alone out there. This isn't where we're supposed to be. Post-traumatic stress disorder is real and it manifests in different ways. Thaisa is a non-believer, but it's hard to uh, uh, deny what's happening to her. I think it's these great moments of this woman who won't even go to therapy, you know, facing this other character, you know, this other side of her that, has, that sort of takes over and says, I'm gonna fix you, I'm gonna fix your life in the craziest way possible, but you know, uh, it, yeah, I think Thaisa is forced to believe. I'm really curious to see how everyone will interpret her journey. I think mm -hmm. that she's more in the Natalie camp of like, mm -hmm. that shit's not real, like what's actually happening. But at the same time, she's completely out of control of her own body yeah. at night yeah. when she's sleepwalking and there's something about that. There's something about that, so. <clears throat> She's at least fighting for her belief that there is nothing to believe in. She's fighting with herself. It's not like this wick of bullshit's doing us any good. You keep coming back alive, don't you? I think Natalie is still very grounded in reality, and I think it's because she's faced with the outside world every day, and she's the one that's hunting and serving everyone. Um, so she's much more realistic, I think. For Van, it's like, is anyone gonna talk to me about this or not? You know, cause, cause I think for her it's like, well, um, this is strange, right? Like there is a symbol we keep seeing everywhere. And like Lottie was right about that bone necklace keeping somebody safe. And um, those like, it's just, is, is anyone gonna talk about how weird this is or not? And then it's like, nobody is. So what is she left with? She's, she's left with whether this is real or not. No one is engaging with me about it, except Lottie. So why, why shouldn't I listen to her, you know? I think Lottie is probably the only character out of the 90s that is the one that just is right on the line. That you can't tell if it is the wilderness, if it's past traumas and fam things she came into the crash with, um, or just uh, her own mental state. Um, so I would say that she's right on the line. We brought it back with us. But I do believe that Lottie has a sense of a higher power. And I think that's what terrifies her because she can't keep it away. It keeps coming back into her life. Mm -hmm. So a lot, like these two characters have a lot in common mm -hmm. in regards to the past revisiting. And, and, and touching on supernatural yeah, elements. Yeah, yeah, touching yeah. on supernatural elements. And and I think they I think they interpret it differently. Like, like you don't say, oh, that's a supernatural moment, or oh, that seems. But she has a sense of this is not right. And I think the young Lottie is clearly starting to feel that. But it's such an interesting one because it's it's starting to come up more. And as we played those roles, I didn't think of it as that. Mm -mm. I just felt it like we were so in the moment of, yeah. of everything that And trauma to. and all those other things that it could be other than supernatural, because you can't play supernatural unless you're, you know, on the Ghost Whisperer and you know it's a supernatural show. You can't really play that in your reality of a character, so, yeah. yeah. And I think I think Ben Scott is kind of a perfect example of that. You know, we, we start getting into some stuff this season where it's like, what exactly is happening with him? You know, is he of sound mind? Is he not? Is there some external force that is having an impact on him as it may or may not be with the with the rest of the people uh, that are out there with him? Yeah, I think Travis is in a unique position where because he didn't have a lot of communication with the girls very early on in the story, um, part of his belief in what is going on is also because he wants to be included in something and he wants to be a part of something that isn't just himself and you know have some hope in something beyond you know the imminent death of everybody you know so um, that's kind of where he's living in this place of confusion um, into what's going on and I think that's kind of that's a really nice place 
to be because you don't really know and he never really gives you an insight as to how much he truly believes or how much he's trying to fit in. Our minds are so powerful and um, you know, I know if I'm ever like super hungry, <laughs> I'm like, la, 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 I could believe anything. And now these people are like starving and freezing and you know, going through literal hell. Everybody is kind of in a place where they could or could not believe in certain things. I think Misty doesn't necessarily believe in the, um, the wilderness, but she will stay close to Lottie because Lottie has power. And that's what Misty gravitates towards. And um, yeah, I think she always just sees an opportunity in those kind of spaces. So I think that she'd like to be very close to it, but I don't think that she's necessarily, you know, fully believing what's happening. Yeah, and I think Shauna's m maybe the one that's the most skeptical about it, even through her pregnancy when um, Lottie tries to help, she just does not want to receive that help. Why? Um, <laughs> it's creepy, dude. Um, uh, so yeah, um, I don't know, which I kind of love because I'm also not really vibing with like the whole crystals and um, in my like personal life, and um, and it was kind of what I was like scared um, with the first season, how like the audience would react to the whole supernaturalistic elements. Um, but I do think to some extent it, it does make sense because I think when you're deprived um, and put in circumstances like they're put in and you have like nothing to latch on to, I think you do need to find something that keeps you moving forward. And I think Shauna's lucky to have like maybe her baby that keeps her moving forward and I think she's latching more into that than like the whole spiritual um, cult side of things. Or murderer. No, 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 no. Are you, mm. I mean, she, yes. I feel like as an adult, she's pretty firmly in the, like, that was craziness and let's not talk about it anymore. Um, it's all just part of a horrible thing that she'd rather not think about. I like keeping it up to okay. interpretation, interpretation, specifically for Lottie, because I feel like if I lean too much one way and explain Lottie in that sense for fans, it might take certain things out certain people out of it um, and that's kind of how I operate on set to the ambiguity of um, the wilderness and I kind of just take it instinctually of in the moment of how I feel yeah yeah because I think every character reacts to like that nature's calling in their own way I think they all have different personal reasons to kind of follow that path or um, or follow Lottie and so I think it's yeah same with the audience it's like whichever side they want to. <laughs> yeah and I think I think that even if somebody doesn't believe in it sometimes it's just nice to believe in something and be a part of something that seems like you might be like you know they have so little control out there that the idea of being able to have some sort of like control or contributing to what is happening in their surroundings feels nice so yeah yeah, I, I yeah I think that though a lot of this whole like the haunting with with um, with Jackie like I don't like think I don't think it's actually like you're like I'm seeing her ghost you know what I mean yeah. or maybe I'm wrong but you know no no like, no I I fully agree I think it's kind of like I definitely think that's more her imagination I I, I think it's kind of like when you I don't know if you've had someone in your family die and you go to hold their sweater and try to keep their scent alive. Yeah. And I think it's kind of like trying to keep Jackie's essence alive. I don't think she actually physically sees her. I think it's just she's trying on to she's trying to latch onto the tiniest bits of memories that she has of her. We're just not going to talk about how she's having the meat shack all day with dead ass Jackie. Sorry. I think it plays into all the characters in some Definitely. way and it's so well written that we, we have these moments and these flashbacks and these visions and I know it's set up quite early for Lottie when Travis is hanging and she sees, you know, the, the young girl who crashes the plane, Laura, Laura Lee, Lee, and she sees that happen and it, it kind of takes her into this world. But again, I think Lottie is the queen of reinventing herself. So, because that way it keeps away, she keeps saying it's not real and your truest, most authentic self when she is not. Mm. And so she's created this illusion that she is and she's graceful and she has all this, this beauty and, and honesty around her. But when the girls arrive, the game is up. And that also comes with the past, the trauma, the hurt, the pain, the visions, the everything. When they arrive, it's like, oh my goodness, 
I now have to deal with everything I've escaped. Mm -hmm. It unravels her, it pulls her, it, it basically she has to drop the mask because everything that she's created and now these women are all here, what is she going to do? So that's such a big hurdle and I think at the end of six, that's the turning point for all of them. They're all there whether they want to be there or not. Mm -hmm. So I think for Lottie having all the women there is really confronting and then all the other shit comes to the surface basically. Everything that they've worked so hard to suppress really kind of comes to the surface and that's the biggest hurdle. So from six on you're going to see something completely different.